Searching through eBay's many listings, I managed to find this Dell Optiplex 9010 featuring an i5-3570 with a base clock of 3.4GHz and a boost of 3.8GHz, a slim DVD drive with 8GB of DDR3 at 1333MHz hidden underneath, a 500GB Seagate Barracuda 7200RPM hard drive mounted behind the DVD drive, a crappy basic 240 watt power supply, and finally a 1 gigabyte GDDR3 ATI 8570 low profile GPU, all for 150 Aussie bucks. This card is a single slot, and oddly enough, for Display IO has a DVI and DisplayPort 1.2, no HDMI to be seen, so a media PC was out of the question. Seeing this GPU, I wondered how far low profile GPUs have advanced over the past five years since this card's release in 2013. But first, let's benchmark the system to get a reference. All games had to be run at 720p at the lowest possible settings as this card is really not a powerhouse. Let's introduce the upgrade, which is a 4GB GTX 1050 Ti, the most powerful low profile GPU currently on the market, costing roughly 250 Aussie dollars or 199 US dollars. Now, this card features many of the improvements achieved over the last five years, such as GDDR5 VRAM, support for newer architectures such as DirectX 12, and a better display I.O. with a DVI port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a display port 1.4. Let's swap out the cards and see the performance increase at both 720p lower settings and some better settings at 1080p to show the power of this modern GPU. As you can see, the 1050 Ti showed a great improvement over the old 8570 and is a worthy upgrade for the system to turn it into a modern gaming PC capable of 1080p gaming at some decent settings. In conclusion, the 8570 really showed its age and couldn't hold its own even in less intensive games such as CSGO at 720p lowest, but I'm sure this card would be great to run some old classics like Age of Empires or used in an emulator PC to relive some favourites. The quad-core 3570 CPU can easily handle the 1050 Ti and makes a great companion for this GPU. 
I personally would recommend just buying a low profile 1050 as the additional cash for the TI version isn't justifiable for the mediocre performance gains it offers if you were to do something like this yourself. If you enjoyed this video leave a like and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing to more graphics card benchmarks and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism leave a comment and thank you very much for watching.